Oh, what's going on, my tapped out auto fans? How you doing today? It's your boy, Dirty Boy, out here doing dirty shit once again. <coughs> Sorry, I'm <Billy. coughs> Talk. My girl doesn't get off until like 11, 11.30 at night. So by the time everything settled down, it's around uh, midnight. So you know she wants to chill out for a couple hours. So it's like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning for get to bed. And uh, yeah, I'm going to wake up 7, 8 o'clock. So give me a minute. I'm going to wake up a little bit. Wow. So how y'all guys doing, huh? We had a hell of a day today. We are going to do spark plugs on a 2002 Ford F 150. And the motor's coming today for the damn Buick so we can get it out of the garage and get that IROC in. Yes. Let's talk about that IROC for a minute, shall we? Um, went and checked it out again, and I had some footage. I accidentally erased it this morning. Tired. <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh, I get, I set into it for the very first time, right? And, uh, you know how them old 80s Camaro cloth bucket seats feel? You know, after a while and stuff like that, I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's kind of wore out, you know, you kind of feel the metal and the sides of the seats, you know? Even, you know, if it had really low miles on it, I can see not doing that, but I mean, 88,000, yeah, you still gonna feel that. So, I get into the car, right? And where it's at, it's dark. Y'all guys gonna see, I'm gonna make a whole video of it. Uh, when we pull it out here, hopefully this weekend. But, uh, so I get out there to it. And, uh, it's really dark where it's at. It really is. So I get into it and stuff like that. And I'm sitting into it. Boy, guys, it's been a while. Six year old dirty boy has sat in a Camaro. And I'm sitting into it and it's like, man... It's like my back, my butt, my legs. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's got like a cool feeling. You know what I'm saying? And kind of, you know, kind of make me uneasy to tell you the truth about it, you know? But then it's like, wow, this kind of, you know, kind of feels a little creepy and shit like that because it's dark as fuck in this car, guys. It's dark. I mean, this damn thing has been sitting in the darkness for 25 years. It really has. And I think that's probably what saved it. So, anyways, I'm sitting in it. And, uh, feeling the, the seats, you know, because they feel weird. So, I'm feeling the seats, and it's like, ooh, wait a minute. The fuck? So, I grab my phone, turn my light on, look. That fucking car, guys, y'all gonna see it. You ain't gonna bullshit. That car has Italian leather seats. I ain't lying. Italian leather seats. So, um, I took a picture of the, um, code, um, on the console, a trim package code. Um, shit, I can't remember right now what the hell they actually called it. Uh, I said, I'm just trying to wake up. It's right there, but, phew, yeah. Anyways, um, so I took a picture of that. Man, it took me actually a little while last night to actually find, um, I mean, I found it on the Chevrolet Camaro website, but it still took kind of took me a little bit to actually find it, just because I really didn't know what, I couldn't remember what the hell it's called. I, I hadn't fucked with third gen Camaros guys in 20 years. I think I was like 23, 24, somewhere around there, I think. I uh, can't really remember. I can't. You know, it's been that long since I owned a Camaro. So I get up and stuff like that and I stuff and I find this thing. So I start, you know, um, reading the codes off. And, uh, you know, it's had uh, the glove box uh, sunroof pack, you know, package on there, which means this little um, leather pouch up above my head and stuff like that. I don't know why the hell they call that a glove box, but okay. You know, and it's got the little, um, I guess, odometer reading things or date deal things on there. Manual, kind of weird. Uh, I thought it would be all electronic up there, but eh. Also, guys, <clears throat> I started looking at it. Now, I've owned three previous Camaros besides this one. A Chevy Camaro, a Chevy Camaro uh, SS, and a Chevy Camaro RS. So once I get this one, I, will ha I would own all four body styles. Weird. 
Um, I think the last one, though, that I had the white one, I'm pretty sure that was a T-top, so I don't think this one's my first T-top. I think I've had two hard to tops and two T-tops. Never a convertible. Never want one. Anyways, back to my story. Um, so, I get out the car. Because when I'm sitting in it, it, there's just subtle differences between the 1987 Camaros, even the IROX, from the 1989, 90, 91, 92 IROX. There's just subtle differences. And I'm looking in the car and stuff, and I'm seeing subtle differences. I do know it's got the the, uh, the gauge package and stuff like that, where it's got the uh, tachometer and all that. Um, yeah, some of them did not come up with a tachometer. Uh, I had one that did not have a tachometer. I actually had to put one in it, and it was a damn standard. Weird. From the factory. Yeah. So, um, I started looking at stuff like that, guys. It's not a 1989 like I was told. Hell no, it's a 1987. It is better than a 1989. I am stoked as shit. I would have been pissed off if the car was newer than 1989. I really was because that's when they started really hammering down on the motor and a lot of them Camaros did have the 305. In 1989, it was real iffy on uh, which had the 305 and the 350 in it. I mean, 1989, I mean, yeah, you would really have, have to put up the VIN. And uh, that was weird. I did go up to the Chevrolet uh, website, and I did put in the uh, the VIN search on that car before all this. And um, for some reason, the uh, year that that car was built was not brung up. I actually looked again last night, and it wasn't brung up. Um, it did say it had a Chevy 350. It didn't say what trim packages it had, but that was just it. It just said it had a Chevy 350 in it, and I had to pay 22 bucks, 22 fucking dollars to get the whole list. And it's just like, that's BS, because I can go to Ford and get it for free. So Chevrolet wants me to pay them $22 for a trim packaging report where I can go to, if I had a Ford, or I got Fords, I can go to Ford with any of my Fords in my Ford truck and type in the VIN number and everything comes up for free. Damn, Chevrolet, you do suck. But, hey, you know, I guess all... Hell, I don't even think Chrysler even has a fucking database where you can actually, I mean, tell you the truth, I, don't even I can't even think of any damn thing Chrysler that you would want to. Chrysler hadn't been worth a flying flick in, what, since like, 79 is when they fell off? I had a 78 Chrysler LeBaron four-door with a 440 in it. That was a cool car. But I think 1979 Chrysler has never, ever, ever, ever been with a damn. Ever. So, yeah. Uh, you know, at least Chevrolet does have the Chevrolet Camaro and stuff like that. You know, prior to 1980. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the 60s. The Actually, I would say all the way back to probably the 50s. The 50s, 60s. In seventies, um, Chryslers. I like them cars. They're cool. I like the trucks. I like the cars. I like the cars more than I like the trucks. But from yeah, I'd say 1940 to probably 1977, 78 ish. Um, those are di those right there wasn't Daimler Chrysler. Those were Mopar. Okay, I think in like 79 is when they switched to Daimler Chrysler and went to shit. And then went here too long ago, they went to um, Fiat. Fiat bought them out. And uh, the worst auto manufacturer dealer company in the world. The worst. One of the worst. I think it's number two the worst. If I remember right, it's number two the worst. Bought out Cr Daimler Chrysler. So now it's Fiat Daimler Chrysler. So yeah. 
when you hop in your Dodge Challenger or you're hopping in your damn brand new Ram pickup truck and you're sitting there hot rodding around with your big old TV in the middle, yeah, you might think you're fly, but guys like me know that you ain't doing nothing but driving a Fiat. Yeah. So, at least one thing, at least Chevrolet has kept their kind of uh, a little bit of their hot rod spirit and their originality. Um, Chevrolet still is not an American brand. It was built by a Frenchman. So it's literally a French car. I think it was from yeah, Sweden. I think the guy was from Sweden. So literally Chevrolet's are designed and built by a Sweden. With American help. I'll give you that. Uh, but uh, I will never think Chevrolet is American anymore. Just because all that money America gave them people and stuff like that to save them from that bailout. And they still couldn't do it. It's like, Ford did it. Ford had no problems. Ford paid their stuff like that and was still rolling. They never accepted a bailout. Not one. Period. I don't think Ford or Toyota did. But Chevrolet did. And then what Chevrolet do? They turned around and sold out to the government. So now Chevrolet is owned by the government. And you wonder why your brand new Chevrolet fucking cars break down all the time. You wonder why it takes six months to get a motor. Government. Yes. Read it. Don't take my word for it. Read it. General Motors is owned by the United States government. And the United States government contracts it out. Yeah, so Chevrolet's not even Chevrolet anymore. Chevrolet ain't even GM anymore. Yeah, the whole company sold out to the government because they couldn't pay the bailout bill. Government took it. Yeah, um, I imagine the the people that are in like the head office corporation and stuff like that. I imagine they didn't lose their jobs. The government's got to have somebody to run the place. But the people that actually run the place is the government. Ford is still Ford. They have never sold their company out to nobody, ever. Now, don't get me wrong. Ford has made some funky-ass fucking cars now lately, okay? I'm not condoning Ford at all, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I really wouldn't own nothing Ford newer than, um, I would say, 1998, for real, and, uh, you know, I'd probably go maybe as far as probably 2003 if I had to, you know, on a Ford. Um, if I did go newer than that stuff, it have had to have a 4.6 in it, no matter what, or the 5.0, you know, the Coyote motor, the 5.0. So, um, yeah, for real. So, I mean, Ford has made some scary shit, like the 5.4s with the cam phaser problems and the out the spark, you know, the spark plugs out the heads. Yeah. Um, blowing the spark plugs out the heads. Um, that's why this silver truck out here, when it was a 5.4, I was passed. That's what we're doing today. Now, today, actually, guys, there's a damn spark plugs in one of them damn 5.4s with the extended spark plugs. What the fuck? Why can't y'all leave it like my silver truck? My silver truck, it's got a 5.4 in it. It takes regular spark plugs. It's the first gen. They only made that motor for two years. It takes the first spark plug. The truck runs great. I have pulled other F-150s with it. And it has no problems fixing me. Pulling a Camaro with it here pretty soon. It ain't going to have no problems. None. So why can't they leave it at that? It has does not have the cam phasers. It does not have the shitty spark plugs. It's a good motor. I don't get why they changed it. I don't. But let's get back to the Camaro. Kind of lost track there for you guys. Um, I don't hide it. I do smoke a little. You know, I don't take pain pills. I don't drink. Okay, I hurt constantly. So it helps me get my mojo on before shit, you know, hits the fan. And uh, I feel like I got about 40 minutes before maybe 40 minutes before shit hits the fan. I don't know if the when this uh, motor is going to be here. Uh, I was hoping it would be here early in the morning, but who knows. Well, let's get back to the Camaro. So I'm sitting in it, 
and you know, notice that uh, it's got Italian leather seats. Notice that it's not an 89, it's an 87, which is great. I think that was the first year for that, um, for that twin port fuel injection. Yeah. And uh, never really messed with that type of fuel injection. I think that fuel injection first came out in the Corvette, didn't it? And I never really messed with that fuel injection, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. So, one thing about it, it does have the Chevy 350. Um, I couldn't find out exactly what transmission's into it. Um, I looked, even when I went to the Chevy Camaro <coughs> code reader book and stuff like that, um, the only thing it told me, it didn't tell me what size transmission it had in it. It just told me that it had a, uh, overdrive transmission, which it does have an overdrive transmission. So that means it's either going to be, uh, a 700R, which I'm thinking that's what's in it. I'm hoping not, but I'm thinking that's what's in it. Um. I was told that it had a 400 turbo in it, but uh, with it being a four-speed, yeah, um, I think it's got a 700R in it, which is fine. Um, 700Rs and stuff like that, I guess they're not bad transmissions. I guess when it does go to shit and stuff like that, I can actually uh, learn how to um, put one together. I've tore hundreds of them apart. I worked at a place... Uh, couple of places and stuff like that that um, we got transmission cores in and tore them down for the parts and aluminum never put one together never but they are the easiest transmissions to tear apart I mean they're so simple to tear apart they really are so um, if there's something is wrong with the transmission or um, you know one day and stuff like that if I screw it up and need to rebuild it and stuff that's going to be one that i think i'm going to rebuild myself i think i'm going to really try and uh rebuild a transmission i mean i can remember how to tear them apart welcome back to the channel tapped out auto fans it's your boy dirty boy how's it going we have a 2002 ford f-150 with the three four in, or the five four in it, we are going to be doing the Dreffel spark plugs. I already took uh, the top cover off here, just uh, three ten millimeter uh, ten millimeter bolts. Undid this. This one right here just pops up, just kind of wiggling, pops up because I wanted to get this plug off that attaches right here, so I can get this whole thing out of here. So I'm gonna get you on the tripod here. I'll be right back, and then we'll get to it. All right, and we got to do shocks on this thing today, too. So shocks and plugs. Now, these right here has got the dreadful um, spark plugs in it. Not like my the silver one over there. Nope, this one here has got the dreadful ones in it. So we're going to try something new with this one this time. I haven't done one of these in probably 10 years. Something like that. Yeah, it's probably been 10 years. Um, so, we're going to try something different by taking these plugs out and see if it works. Cool. Take this whole damn thing out the way. There we go. Now... Should we do the asshole side first or this side? I guess it doesn't matter. I take. There's a power steering plate. On the other side, this power steering takes uh, three eight millimeters. show you what that plate looks like. Just 
one right here just keeps this from wobbling back and forth. That's actually all it does, it just keeps this from wobbling back and forth. It does nothing else. Alright. Engine is still pretty warm. Should just drop the air out of the tires and drop the truck down. Be a little easier to work on. You can do that at home. Just let the air out of your truck and stuff like that. But as these are uh, getting ready to get the plugs pulled out, I could be uh, doing the shocks on this thing. So, as I, I don't know if this is a. Uh, you know, I've done like everybody else, just took a uh, impact and a uh, spark plug socket, just hit, I don't know. So, I'm going to do something a little different this time. Oh, fucking 7 millimeter. Alright, I'm going to go get a 7 millimeter. I'll be right back. Alright guys, we're all back. It's been actually several minutes. Uh, not several hours, but it's been several minutes and stuff like that. Uh, I think this thing most definitely had coal packs put in it at one time. And the guy that put them in decided he wanted to just strip every, or, um, strip every damn boat, uh, that's on here. Not really thread-wise, but, uh, uh, you know, bolt-wise where the socket goes onto the boat. So I did have to pull the fuel rail up. I mean, it's not really that big a deal. It's, uh, just two eight millimeters, uh, front and back. Um, I usually try my best not to do it that way, but God, why? It's so damn tight. So, just get that little uh, swivel and a short seven, and you just pop the fuel rail up, and it goes right on. Hopefully, there's enough on here. It doesn't feel like stripping out on me. You hear that? Yeah. That's what happens when you cross thread a bolt. Oh, man. Why? I do have to admit, guys, that I am a Ford guy. I am. But changing plugs on these suck. Now, will these motors last longer than a 5.3? Yes, they will last longer than a 5.3. I've seen them last longer than a 5.3. The only problem of it is, it's shit like this changing spark plugs. You know, it's got a pain in the ass. But now, you might be saying, well, at least a 5.3 doesn't blow the spark plugs out the heads. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Well, definitely, that happens. Terry's out there, that white one. First thing that happened with it was a four-wheel drive went out. The second thing that, went, that happened to it was uh, the damn... Uh, as we was fixing the four wheel drive, the damn um, spark plug blew right out the cylinder. Right out the cylinder head, number three spark plug, right out. You blew it out. So. This is like a real pain in the ass. I need to go get a shorty, guys. I'll be right back. Well, I'm at my shorty. Shorty extension. I get the back one. Shorty extension. Long 7 millimeter wrench. Or uh, socket. And this one back here in the back coil pack, you can barely see this one. From this angle, you can actually, you know, from... 
right here you can actually see it pretty good now I know a lot of you guys are like well all you had to do is just get a seven millimeter wrench and take that one out well I tried that and somebody stripped the uh, the head of the boat and stuff like that putting it on because uh, evidently they think you got to be you know Hercules to get the damn thing tight they uh, stripped stripped the uh, boat head that's what I was looking for they stripped the boat head and uh, I couldn't the damn wrench wouldn't work and they had it on there so damn tight and yeah, you can see the bow heads I mean, it's probably been a while since they, things had uh, cool packs put on it but I'm pretty sure Ford doesn't put aftermarket cool packs in their vehicles let's see what this one says I need to put this over here. Let's see. Yeah. It says, uh, it's got to be an aftermarket coil pack. They sure as hell don't say Motorcraft on them. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a test trial. And we're going to break the first one here loose. You know what? I was almost messed up, guys. I forgot. I almost skipped this step. Give me one second.